Before the war, this is what families in Ukraine could do together. When Vladislav Buryak was safe. But in April, this schoolboy is thought to have been abducted by Russian troops at a checkpoint. He has never served in the army, he's never held a weapon, he's still at school. Oleg Buryak is a government official, but also Vladislav's dad. He thinks his job is the reason why his son was taken. I know for a fact he's in a prison cell, but Russian negotiators let me speak to him today. He keeps asking me, when will they let me go? When will you come and get me? Mentally, he's still holding on. He's not broken yet. In every decimated street and village terrorized by the Russian onslaught, lives have been ripped apart and children have disappeared. Ukraine's missing persons charity has recorded 10 times the number of annual cases in just three months. It is huge numbers, no one could be prepared for it. We have received uh, around 2,200 cases of missing children. You know, the hardest is to think or your child is alive or no, and what can be with him or her. Where sisters Daria, Anna and Maria are, nobody knows either. They were last seen in February in this apartment block in Borodyanka. I hope they are alive, but so much time has passed and we have heard nothing about them. Valentina's son went to the same school as the girls. I can't bring myself to think that they have died. Another mother stopped to talk to us too. My children keep asking me if they've been found, what's happened to them. Maybe they were taken away to Russia. Many of the children who've gone missing in this conflict have disappeared alone, some across European borders, some as forced evacuees to Russia. But many of them simply can't be found because of the destruction to buildings, to infrastructure and the loss of communications. Communities are trying their best to exist again, but so much of their life still hangs in the balance. There is no consolation for what is happening here. Lucy Watson, ITV News, Borodyanka, Ukraine.